is Samir Kashyap and I'll be explaining my project for Spring 2017 in the course of wireless communication. Uh, my topic is a rake receiver for ultra wideband communication systems. Uh, so here are the brief things that I'll be going through throughout this presentation. Uh, first thing is what ultra wideband technology is all about. Uh, then I triply designed the uh, 802.15 standard to denote ultra wideband communication systems. So I'll g be going through in brief about that. Uh, next up will be uh, a brief w working of rake receivers. After that, how to generate an ultra wideband signal. Um, the different channels associated with ultra wideband communication will be discussed. Um, the fading channels between the transmitter and receiver in ultra wideband systems uh, will be discussed later. Um, uh, some of the techniques to design a rake receiver will also be discussed. Then a simulating model was designed uh, to uh, simulate the ultra wideband communication system that will be discussed and the results from the mod model will be uh, explained in brief. So first of all what exactly is ultra wideband technology? So this ultra wideband technology was first mooted uh, keeping in mind the demands of the future uh, that uh, we need to conserve energy and we need high bandwidth communication for a short range for a short range so keeping all this in mind an ultra wide band technology was introduced so i triple i triple after uh, after the introduction of the stand, uh, the technology i triple uh, quickly developed a standard for this uh, in the 802.15 standard so uh, it started it all started off with fcc allowing unlicensed ultra wide band communications with only slight restrictions on energy and waves uh, so after that I triply developed the 802.15 standard to uh, define a standard for uh, the uh, bandwidth, the data rate, and etc. for the ultra wideband communication. So the physical layer and the data link layer application standards are uh, dis discussed in this uh, uh, discussed in this I triply 802.15. So some of the physical layer schemes are based on impulse radio and uh, digital spread spectrum technologies. So advantages of an ultra wideband communication. Um, it has immunity to fading as the signals are very short so it can uh, transmit uh, the signals without any loss of energy. So multiple access can be provided as I have explained uh, that the data link layer uh, standards have been developed. So due to this short range uh, long range of trans uh, due to this short uh, short uh, signal, a long range of transmission can be used. So disadvantages is because uh, the the signals are divided into many multipath components. Uh, uh, when an ultra wideband signal is transmitted, so getting uh, recovering all the components uh, from the signal is difficult. Uh, uh, to overcome this, a rake receiver is used. So what exactly is a rake receiver? Uh, so a rake receiver consists of several correlators um, each of them is called a finger so each finger is uh, is used to co correlate or select one multipath component so once the signal comes and each uh, once, the s once the signal is received by the antenna so uh, the signal is delayed uh, using a simple duration by a simple duration and each of the uh, signals are analyzed independently so uh, the fading of each signal is analyzed independently so this setup re uh, results in a higher signal to noise ratio uh, than a normal receiver setup uh, sometimes uh, each finger or each correlator have to be has to be weighted appropriately to achieve a maximum benefit so there are certain techniques of using a rake receiver um, an all rake is one of the basic uh, techniques of uh, rake receiver it come it takes it takes into consideration all the all the multipath components so the number of components present is will be directly proportional to the bandwidth of the signal used. Since it takes in all the multipath components, the number of correlators of the fingers required is very large, and these these cannot be realized in reality. So we uh, so we use uh, other uh, rake receivers such as the partial rake or the selective rake, which use fewer number of fingers. So selective rake uses an algorithm to select only the first. Uh, sorry, the best n paths. So it uses an algorithm. It sorts the uh, paths according to the signal to noise ratio, and selects the best n paths as uh, directed by the user. So 
complexity wise they're both same the selective rake and the all rake is uh, because the select uh, the n can be any number but partial rake on the other hand selects only the first n paths so according to studies the uh, almost the 85 percent of the signals are there within the first 20 or the first 40 s- 40 fingers first 40 multipath components uh, depending on the com uh, depending on the channel model used which i'll come to that later so using this theory we can select a low we can design a lower complexity system known as the partial rake so signal gen- generation how exactly can a uh, ultra wideband signal be generated so a direct sequence spread spectrum uh, technology is used to generate an ultra wideband technology um, it consists of a pulse coder and a d- uh, dsss uh, unit which uh, has a pseudo random code and later a pulse amplitude modulator is used uh, to ampli- uh, to modulate the uh, code uh, obtained and then these this modulated signal is sh- uh, sent through a pulse shaping filter to obtain the ultra wideband signal so the input bit sequence is transmitted is generated at rb bits per second uh, in the data source and these rep- these bits are uh, repeated n times s- in order to introduce redundancy in the system so once the system is uh, once these bits are repeated the spread spectrum technology uh, uses uh, divides the si- si- uh, divides the signal into positive and negative value sequences uh, using a pseudo random code of period np so the resulting signal which which we call it as d uh, is periodic so and the period is equal to the bit repetition in, uh, interval then it is sent to the pulse amplitude modulator given by the block modulation so which generate sequence of unit pulses so a pulse shaping filter is then used to generate a uh, ultra wideband signal of necessary requirement so if d is the signal after the spread spectrum technology and pft is the of uh, pft is the impulse response of the filter so the output signal is given by the following s of t is it m- uh, the summation of the signals between minus infinity and infinity so the ultra wide band cha- channels so the eight zero eight triple eight dot one five dot three a standard uh, has modified the existing sv or the sele venezuela multipath channel model and incorporated uh, it as the standard for uh, ultra wideband communication systems so it assumes that the multipath components arrive in clusters and these clusters are formed due to reflection of signals in the environment of transmitter and receiver so it uh, this m- this model is used because uh, the mathematical f- uh, calculation becomes easy bec- uh, as uh, using these three conditions so the clusters arrive according to a poisson process and the uh, multipath components uh, the amplitude of these multipath components are uh, relay random variable and the phase angles are uniform random variables in the region 0 to 2 pi so mathematical analysis becomes easier so using these there are four uh, channel models for ultra wideband communication so the channel model one is the line of sight communication in short range between 0 to 4 meter channel model 2 is for the non line non line of sight in the same range uh, channel model 3 is for the non line of sight for a li- uh, slightly higher range 4 to 10 meter channel model 4 is the extreme case where which is not often li- used so it's the no- it's uh, also a nine non line of sight tech channel with 25 nanosecond root me- rms delay spread so if you can look through the table it gives the channel characteristics uh, of different channel models so one important thing is the number of significant paths which shows uh, 85% of the energy is stored within the twi- uh, within 21 uh, multipath channels for channel model 1 for 34 for channel model 2 and 65 for channel, mo- channel model 3 so it shows that 21 for the first 21 components uh, occup- uh, have that w- have 85 pi- 85% of the total energy of the system so in order to analyze the uh, how a rake receiver works we need to use uh, we need to consider fading uh, between the transmitter and receiver so first thing uh, first type of channel is the additive white gaussian noise channel so in this this is the basic 
uh, this is for basic analysis so it, in this only the linear addition of white noise is considered so the amplitude has a gaussian distribution for this um, this channel does not consider fading or interference of frequency selectivity so this can be used only to study the basic behavior of the system so uh, if uh, awgn channel is considered a receiver must have a correlator and a detector a correlator converts the received signal into uh, decision variables and detector detects these decision variables and estimates a waveform so this way the signal is demodulated a relay fading channel is what is genu generally considered so the signal envelope fluctuates uh, according to a relay distribution when there is no clear line of sight uh, uh, path between the transmitter and receiver so this cha uh, this fade fading channels can be considered into fast fading and slow fading so a uh, relay fading channel can be modeled using a markov process with finite number of states so the signal to noise ratio of the system can be partitioned into n levels and each level is associated with a markov process and each each state is associated with a selective channel uh, which determines the probability that a simple can be received in error this way the channels can be categorized uh, to a realize a f relay fading channel so one important uh, concept is that the density function of signal to noise ratio in a fading environment in the presence of white gaussian noise follows an exponential distribution which will help the mathematical analysis uh, further so one other thing that should be considered are the doppler shifts when there is the relative movement between the uh, transmitter and receiver but for our analysis we shall keep it to just the normal